This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you this morning to the virtual worship of First Baptist Church West in Charlotte, North Carolina. Today I trust and pray that this worship service encourages you, lifts you up, and provides you with the insurance that God loves and cares about you. To get more information about our church, please visit us at fbcwest.org. Enjoy your service.
Hey, First Baptist Church West. May is National Mental Health Awareness Month. Each year, millions upon millions of people across this nation face the reality of living with a mental illness. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a profound effect on people, not only across this nation, but people across this nation who suffer from living with a mental illness of all ages, old and young. So now, more so than ever, it's time to reduce the stigma around mental health and mental health struggles. Seek support. If you were having an issue with your tooth, you would seek a dentist. If you were having an issue with your heart, you would seek out a cardiologist. Your mental health is equally as important. So let's reduce the stigma. Let's reduce the fear of going out and seeking support. God has not given us the spirit of fear. He's given us power, he's given us love, and he's also given us a sound mind. Fight your fear and seek the support that you need from a mental health professional. That could be a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a therapist, or a counselor. But seek the support that you need. If you need additional support or more information around mental health, contact the National Alliance on Mental Health. Their telephone number is 1-800-950-6264. Again, that number is 1-800-950-6264. God bless. Let's pray together. Our Lord and God, there is much that we have to be thankful for. For indeed, you are a way maker. And we have seen the ways in which you have made for us and days gone by so many times. We thank you and we give you glory and we give you honor for being who you are and for being what you mean to us. I pray now that Ricky might die, that Christ might speak. Hide me behind the cross. May the words be heard be the words of a risen Savior who offers both spirit and life everlasting. For it is in his name and for his sake that we pray. Amen. Well, it's good to be here in the Lord's house on a day that the Lord has made with the people of God. I greet you, my brothers and sisters, with Jesus' joy. And welcome again to the virtual worship of First Baptist Church West on this, the third Sunday in May. The month of May has been set aside as Mental Health Awareness Month, and we're spending some time today to talk about issues related to mental health awareness. Our own Reverend John Burden has already shared with you today, who spends a good bit of his time as a chaplain working with juveniles that are dealing with mental health struggles and issues. We're thankful and grateful for his ministry. But we want to take some time today to talk about mental health and the things that we need to do to ensure that we're taking care of ourselves. 
there is also a biblical passage that helps us with this today. And so I want to invite your attention to a passage of scripture that's found in the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 7, beginning at verse 31 and following. Again, leaving the regions of Tyre, he went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, to the regions of Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who also had a speech difficulty and begged Jesus to lay his hands on him. So he took him away from the crowd privately. After putting his fingers in the man's ear and spitting, he touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed deeply and said to him, Apathia, that is, be open. Immediately his ears were open. His speech difficulty was removed, and he began to speak clearly. Then he ordered them to tell no one, but the more he would order them, the more they would proclaim it. They were extremely astonished and said, he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and people unable to speak, talk. Pray with me, if you will, for a little while this morning from this subject, a special need and a special problem. A special need and a special problem. Jesus dealt with countless needs during his ministry, but no need may have been more severe than that of mental illness. Whereas the text does not state the mental illness was the source of the man's problem, what is clear is that he cannot communicate with those around him. He's robbed of the ability to hear the voices of his loved ones. He's unable to hear the sounds of nature in a flowing stream and the morning songs of birds that signal the beginning of a new day. He is prevented from telling others what he needs and what he wants. He is limited to motions with his limbs and unarticulated sounds to make his desires known. Being unable to speak or to hear has locked him into an internal prison that placed his mental health in jeopardy. We're not made to live off, to live cut off from others and unable to communicate. Left alone without the engagement of others, life can take a toll on us. The man had a special need and a special problem. He had the need to be restored and made whole again. He had the problem of having multiple afflictions that worked in tandem against him. He cannot hear and he cannot speak. And whereas life appears to be bleak, he is blessed to have those who care about him. His inabilities, his misfortunes have not caused everyone to turn their back on him. There are those unnamed in the text that make themselves available to help him find a cure for his problems. They brought the man to Jesus. They, that must always have a good connotation. They often refers to unnamed sources involved in things that do not always work toward our good. They are the means to rumors that can destroy careers and lives. They are faceless policymakers that alter the course of person's daily lives such as the gas shortage that we are currently speaking that is contributed by some they. They were the words used by people in my community to talk about the power brokers that routinely took advantage of the weak. They will just do whatever they want to and ain't nothing we can do about it. 
have of the day in this text are persons willing to be instruments to a problem solution, to a man's problem of being unable to communicate. They brought him to Jesus. They brought the man with a special need and a special problem to Jesus. And the first step to the potential recovery of the man's mental health starts with a community that supported him and would not leave him to struggle alone in isolation with his problem. This month, as I stated, is mental health awareness. And the first step towards sound mental health is a supportive community, accountability partners that help us to know that we are more than just what we do. We're more than singers. We're more than teachers. We're more than preachers. We are more than government employees. We are more than factory workers. We are more than fast food workers. We are more than taxi drivers transporting children and others to and fro. We are far more than the sum of the things that we do. Time spent with family where we're reminded of our connection to others that love us and love us unconditionally. Hobbies that bring us in contact with nature and others that make us appreciate the world that we live in and the part that we play all play an important role in maintaining sound mental health. Never underestimate the value of a supportive community and its role in helping us to maintain sound mental health. The recent pandemic and the shutdown orders have caused us and forced us into more isolation and we are seeing more struggles with mental health issues. And so if there is someone that you have not seen that you had been used to seeing in the previous year, pick up the phone and call them. Don't send them a text. Don't send them an email. Let them hear your voice. Drive by, but wear your mask and just wave at them. Let them know that you miss them and that they matter to you. This past Sunday, which was Mother's Day, the Saturday before, I took some time to go visit some of our senior members to check in on them without going in the door. They were all elderly women. And I went to take them flowers and a card to let them know that the pastor was thinking about them. He said, you've made my day. His tears swelled up in their eyes. Didn't take much. You could get the card from the Dollar Tree. Didn't take much. The flowers were not that expensive. But it added so much to the mental health and awareness of others because they knew that somebody cared about them. Never underestimate the value of a supportive community. They brought him to Jesus. What happens when a community brings a man with a special need and a special problem to Jesus? Well, first, Jesus takes him aside away from the crowd. And whereas the community played a vital role in bringing the man to Jesus, Jesus does some of his best work with us and for us in private, away from the attention of others. Alone with Jesus, the man is able to give Jesus his undivided attention. He's able to focus more on what Jesus wants to do with him and the role he may play in his own recovery. Away from the crowd, he has a heightened sensitivity to the things of God. Away from the crowd, his own level of expectancy increases. 
away from the crowd. He can know the value of intimate fellowship with the divine. It was away from the crowd. And Paul spent 14 years after his conversion being taught by the Holy Spirit firsthand what he must do. It was away from the crowd on the backside of a desert that Moses encountered a life-altering moment in a bush that burned but was not consumed. And then from that bush came a voice that sent him out on the work of a lifetime. So much of what God wants to do with us is reserved just for us according to his plan for us and he does not feel obligated to tell everybody else what he's going to do with us. We are not cookies cut to the same design but we are uniquely and wonderfully made equipped with a plan for our lives that will bring glory to God and work toward our good. It is not possible to fully understand how God is working all of those things out until we're able to spend time alone in his presence. Football season is around the corner. And this week, the NFL announced its schedule. And when games soon began, there will be a familiar scene that you will see that each team will do in every game. They will huddle. A certain group will be apart and separate from others away from the football. And in that huddle, they will discuss what their plans are and what they want to do and what they want to achieve. They can't have that conversation with the crowd. They can't have that conversation with fans sharing so loud that they cannot hear one another. They have to come aside. And it is when we come aside alone with God that we find out what God wants to do with us. Alone with him, the dots begin to connect. The blindness fades away, and what once was mystery becomes revelation. Whenever Jesus takes us alone with him, something exciting is about to happen. Jesus takes the man with the special need and the special problem aside to be alone with him. But there, there's the second thing that this text helps us to see, and here it is. Jesus lets him know that he is aware of his problem, and he is willing to address them. Not a single problem. But Jesus is aware that there is more wrong than some people may realize or understand. He has multiple problems. Right away after taking the man aside to be alone with him, Jesus goes right to work to let him know that he knows what the problems are and that he is willing to address them. The man cannot tell Jesus what is wrong with him because he cannot speak. But Jesus knows the problems. And so many that struggle with issues of mental health they cannot tell you what's wrong with them. They just know that something is not right. They know that they need help, but they don't always know how to articulate the help that they need. And what I love about Jesus is that even when I do not know how to tell him what's wrong with me, he already knows. He knows what afflicts me but he also knows how to fix it. There are some that can diagnose the problem, but they're unable to prescribe a cure for the problem. And where it's good to know what's wrong, it's better to know not just what's wrong, but to have the cure to fix what's wrong, or to have access to the cure to fix what is wrong. Jesus puts his finger in the man's ears, and doing so says that he is touching the problem area. I know your hearing does not work. 
and your ears were made to hear the wonders of God's creation and the voices of them that worship him. Your ears were made to hear the cries of those in need across the street and around the world and because you could hear move into action to eliminate their suffering. Jesus touched his ears saying, I, I know the problem. And anytime Jesus touches us, change is on the way. Do you know anything about him touching you and the change that came in your life that you can draw a straight line back to that time when he touched you? Some was in a revival meeting on a mourner's bench. And they talked about something hitting them in the top of their head and running down to the sole of their feet. And they have not been the same since. For others, it was on a production line and all of a sudden tears began running down their cheek and they didn't know initially what was going on and then it dawned on them that God was working on the inside and although they might have been doing manual labor with their hands, God was doing a work on their hearts. Jesus touched him. And then Jesus spit and touched his tongue. And we'll not enter into a theological or medical debate about the value of spittle. What we do know is that anytime Jesus touches our tongues, our tongues are made different. The way Jesus addressed the man's needs begins with a touch. There may be nothing that we need more today in our lives than a touch from God. Touch could cure so much of what ills us today. Touch from God reminds us that he cares about us. Touch from God tells us that we're valued and we have a place in the world. Touch from God can give us what we need when we need it most allow us to press on a little farther. Jesus let the man know that he was aware of his problem and he was willing to address them by touching his ears and his tongue. But there's a final thing the text teaches. And here it is. Jesus draws the man's attention upward. Jesus looks up to heaven to show the man that there are no limits to God's power. No matter what our afflictions may be, God is able to restore, to mend, to heal, to make whole again. Our afflictions can cause us to spend our days looking down on ourselves, losing our sense of self-esteem. Our troubles can lead us into believing that we have nothing to contribute in the world and lose all hope for something better. And when our souls are downtrodden, when our outlook is filled with gloom, we are like a baby eagle living in a barnyard with chickens. Since chickens were the only creatures in the barnyard with feathers, the young eagle began to think that he belonged to them. So he spent his days stretching in the dirt and living on chicken feed. In time, the eagle grew and became larger than any of the chickens, but he stayed in the barnyard because it's all that he knows. He spends his entire life looking down stretching in the dirt, living on chicken feed. But one day, he hears a sound that makes him look up. It's the sound of another eagle flying over the barnyard. Something instinctively happens inside him. And because he looked up, 
he knew that he did not belong in the barnyard, but he belonged in the sky. So he began to flap his wings, and as he flapped, he began to soar. Mental health issues can make us think that we belong in a barnyard when in fact we were made to soar. But when we look up and not down, we see our true possibilities. We see that we are children of the divine and all things are possible through him that strengthens us. When we look up, we see power belongs to God and that there are no limits to his power. Jesus drew the man's attention upward and declared the words, be open. Immediately his ears were open and his tongue was loosened. And the effects of Jesus' work was evidence and the result because the man spoke plainly. He spoke in ways that others could understand him. The communication barrier that had been there was overcome. He is now part of a larger community able to contribute in ways not afforded to him in the past. He spoke plainly. Surely, he spoke of the goodness of Jesus. Surely, he spoke of how his life was different now. Surely, he spoke in praise and gratitude for what the Lord had done for him and what his friends had done in bringing him to Jesus. The result of the man's restoration was not just his healing. Watch this. But the raised understanding of an entire community about Jesus. Astonished, the entire community said, Jesus does all things well. Let that sink in. He doesn't just feed the hungry. He doesn't just give sight to the blind. He doesn't just help the lame to walk. Jesus does all things well. Whatever trouble there is in our life, whatever is bogging us down and holding us down and not allowing us to live out the plan that God has for our lives, Jesus does all things well. Go in the strength of that knowledge and go knowing that you are not alone. For he has promised to be with you always. Let's pray. Jesus doeth all things well. Thank you for mending broken hearts. And thank you for bringing peace to troubled minds. Thank you for doing all things well. Now this day, Lord, whatever struggles, whatever difficulties, whatever hardships, might bring the blues or full depression. Whatever is causing persons to feel like they are living outside of themselves. Come now on angels' wings with healing bonds. Come now and fall fresh, Holy Spirit. Rain down 
your mercy and your grace. And wrap us in divine love. Because of a God that doeth all things well. Honor your word. May it not return into your void. May it serve the purpose that you desire and design. That the glory might be yours. Both now and forever. In the matchless name of him who is Savior and Lord and soon coming King, even Jesus our Christ. Amen. Well, my friends, thank you again so much for joining us in the virtual worship of First Baptist Church West today and this special day of mental health awareness. There's a number that's going to appear on the screen that is a national hotline if you're struggling with issues of mental health we want to encourage you to pick up the phone and call that number there will also be information on our website that you can visit by simply going to fbcwest.org where you can find local assistance for struggles and help that you might need with mental health can't thank you enough for the wonderful privilege that you have given me of being able to come into your homes through this technology Please be willing to share this word with others today. And I trust and pray that you will have a great and grand week because of a God that loves you with an everlasting love. Thanks again, and I look forward to sharing with you again next week at First Baptist Church West. <laughs>